Ta-da! What I like to do is go over a little overview of rational roots. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to first talk about this polynomial. And with the polynomial, what you guys uh, need to work on it or need to know is kind of two important formulas are um, theorems kind of your book. The one is uh, the fundamental theorem of algebra. And pretty much what that's saying about this uh, polynomial is that there exists a root in the complex number system, meaning it can be real or it could be imaginary. Um, so therefore, if it's real, that means it's going to cross you know, the x-axis so we can go and figure out where those is. But if it's an imaginary, well, then it's not going to exactly cross, but we'll still be able to actually figure out what the roots are um, now that we have uh, know what we're doing with imaginary numbers. And that's what I previously described in our imaginary numbers and complex numbers um, section. So here, I know there has to be a root. And what, um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about rational roots, but we're also going to be talking about just roots in general and you know, finding the zeros of the function, which is the exact same thing. Um, you know, what we're trying to do, we're trying to find where it crosses the x-axis or what at least are the roots or the zeros of the function. So what the fundamental theorem of uh, algebra states is that there's going to be, there is going to be at least one zero or root for this polynomial. That means by factoring or by doing quadratic or whatever I'm going to do to find my zeros, I'm going to find at least one. Now, um, the linearization of, uh, what's it called? The linearization factor is linear factorization theorem states something a little bit different. What that says is there's at most three zeros or your highest degree factors. So therefore, when looking at this problem, I have a maximum of three factors. I'm sorry, a maximum of three factors and a minimum of one. So when it, when that question asks me, you know, what are the zeros or what are the roots of this? I know I'm looking either between one and three. I can't have any more. I can't have any less. All right. Hello. Hello. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, for this problem is. We need to look and see if we can factor it, because that's usually the easiest way we can start doing it by factoring. Um, so I want to first look if I can factor anything out. No. Um, and if there's, since there's four terms, I automatically think factor by grouping. Factoring by grouping, it's not really going to help me out. I'm not going to get the exact same factors. Well, the following features please report the guidance. Dobbins, Franco, Darty, Moore, Sheep, Whitmore, Uniting and covenant. Will the following students please report the guidance? Sarah Lindale. Sarah Lindale, can you please report the guidance? Thank you. Okay. Uh, so therefore, we have this. Those are the things that we cannot do. Slide. Sorry. What else are you gonna do? Um, we can't use a quadratic formula because it's not a uh, quadratic. We can't do uh, uh, completing the square. So we're kind of stuck here, aren't we? Um, we need to somehow figure out how we're going to find the zeros. Well, there's one other test we can use, which is called the rational zero test. And what that states is all the possible rational zeros for this function. Now, I'm not saying they have to be zeros, but all the possible rational zeros. And remember, rational is any number you can represent as a rational expression, like 1 half is rational, 3 is rational, because we can represent it as 3 over 1. So all the possible rational zeros. equal the factors of our constant all over the factors of our leading coefficient. So I'm going to say the zeros or the rational zeros, because not all zeros are going to be rational. You might, you're going to might have some irrational zeros. But your rational zeros are going to equal plus or minus 6, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 1, all over plus or minus 1. So just a little overview for you guys. Um, I'm going to show you a couple problems of how we can use these three formulas. But what you guys should know from right now is this is the list of all possible zeros. And what we can use from this 
is you can use a graphing calculator to see if any of these are your roots. You can use synthetic division. If by doing synthetic division you get a remainder of zero, then you know that one of these is a root or a zero. You can also use evaluation. Remember, if you evaluate your function for one of these and you get zero, then you know that you also, um, these, these rational roots is also zero. So I've been working through much of these problems, but I just kind of want to give you an overview of um, how to find your rational roots and how, what do the zeros um, or the roots represent for a polynomial function.